Russians have always been mysterious when it comes to their space organization, Roscosmos. They have had many successes in the past and are currently aiming at adding one more in the bag. Their new plan is to send a rocket up to the gas giant, Jupiter. A Jupiter exploration project is not the same as the Moon or Mars. The climactic conditions and excess presence of hydrogen and helium make it much more difficult to pay a visit. So how does Roscosmos plan to take on Jupiter? And by when do they plan on doing so? Stick around to the end to find out more. Russia aims to launch a nuclear-powered spaceship to the Moon, Venus, and finally Jupiter. In May this year, the Russian space agency Roscosmos said that its space tug will launch its cosmonauts on an interplanetary mission in 2030. This mission is said to be Russia's big comeback into the space game, as this project has been in the works for decades now and has been much anticipated by the space organizations across the world. But before we go ahead, we would like to give you some details about a couple of terms we'll be using today. A space tug is a term given to a spacecraft that transports space travelers around and their equipment from one orbit to another. Also, the general term that we have heard for these space travelers is astronauts, right? Well, that is not entirely correct in the case of the Russians. Anyone who has been trained under NASA is called an astronaut, but the ones who get their training done under Roscosmos or hold a Russian license are known as cosmonauts. Essentially, they do the same work, but under different names to keep matters clear. The energy module of their spaceship, codenamed Zeus, is meant to provide enough power to transport large payloads through deep space. It's essentially a nuclear power plant on wheels. This spaceship can power hundreds and thousands of homes at once if put into comparison. Spacecrafts across the globe function on solar power or gravity to go from point A to point B. However, after watching Russia's genius, more and more countries are trying to find their way around nuclear power as a solution. Currently, astronauts may need more than three years to complete a round-trip mission to Mars, which stands approximately 365 million kilometers away from the Earth. A nuclear-powered spacecraft, according to NASA, could shave over a year off that schedule. As early as 2027, the United States plans to place a nuclear power station on the Moon, consisting of a 10-kilowatt reactor combined with a lunar lander. NASA has only carried one nuclear reactor into space so far, on a satellite in 1965. Other spacecraft, such as the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers on Mars, are nuclear-powered but do not require a reactor. Meanwhile, Russia has taken a comfortable lead over the rest and has launched more than 30 reactors into space. According to Russian official news outlet Sputnik, the Zeus module would enhance those efforts by deploying a 500 kilowatt nuclear reactor to push itself from one planet to the next. The spacecraft will make its first stop at the moon, then move to Venus, where it will be able to utilize the planet's gravity to change directions and reach its final target, Jupiter. This would aid with propellant conservation. According to Alexander Blashenko, Roscosmos's executive director for long-term programs and science, the mission would span 50 months or just over four years. Blashenko and Roscosmos and the Russian Academy of Sciences are still working on calculating the flight's ballistics or trajectory, as well as the amount of weight it can carry during a presentation in Moscow. The project might pave the way for a new era in Russian spaceflight, deep space exploration. According to Sputnik, Russia is working on a space station that will use the same nuclear power technology. Most spacecraft derive their power from the sun, batteries, or radioisotopes, which are unstable atoms. Solar panels, for example, are used to power NASA's Juno mission on Jupiter. Solar power can also be utilized to charge batteries in spacecraft. However, as a spaceship goes farther from the sun, the energy source becomes less strong. This automatically means that the speed at which the craft travels becomes lesser, and hence it takes more time. To take into consideration our previous statement when NASA said that using a nuclear reactor 
can cut a trip to Mars down by almost a year, this is what they meant. A nuclear reactor has a set speed that can be adjusted manually and does not depend on external sources such as the sun. Lithium batteries can also be used to power shorter trips on their own. In 2005, the Huygens probe used batteries to land on Saturn's moon Titan for a limited period of time. To survive the extreme environments of the outer solar system and interstellar space, NASA's twin Voyager spacecraft use radioisotopes, also known as nuclear batteries. But this isn't the same as carrying a nuclear reactor on board. But again, we are talking about crafts that were designed to orbit almost 50 years ago. And for the time, they certainly outperformed their competitors. Using nuclear reactors has its own advantages. The number one advantage is, as we mentioned, that they do not need any sunlight to operate, which is pretty much the case with almost every other spacecraft. Nuclear reactor-powered crafts can work in cold, dark environments without having to bother about being in any proximity to the sun. The number two advantage is that they can be relied upon for long periods of time. This means that if we were ever to make a trip to a much further distance, using a nuclear reactor-fueled rocket would make much more sense as compared to a lithium-ion or solar-powered craft. If we consider Zeus, we will see that it has been built to sustain for 10 to 12 years, which is almost double that of the other crafts there. The final advantage is, of course, its speed. Using a nuclear reactor-powered craft can take you to places much quicker. Zeus itself has the ability to cover interplanetary journeys faster than its fellow spacecraft. However, if we flip the coin on the other side, we will notice that there is one challenge one can face when using nuclear reactors. And that issue is, well, using nuclear reactors. These reactors are only compatible with certain types of fuel, such as highly enriched uranium, and that is the only fuel that can withstand a reactor's high temperature. Now, just because it can withstand the temperatures does not mean that it is completely safe. Accidents can occur in space at any time, and nothing can be done as damage control in those cases. In December 2020, the United States discontinued the use of any crafts that were headed into orbit and were operating on enriched uranium, and said that the missions could not be carried out until a substitute is discovered, whether nuclear or non-nuclear. The Zeus has been in the making since 2010. After its initiation, Russia said that they would need two decades to take the module up there, and as records are showing one decade later, they are on the right track. In 2018, engineers began producing and testing a prototype of the Zeus module. According to Sputnik, Roscosmos also secured a contract worth 4.2 billion rubles, or $57.5 million, with Arsenal, a St. Petersburg-based design firm for a conceptual design. Russia's attempts to build a new space station by 2025 could benefit from the technology. Last month, the BBC reported that Russia intends to cut ties with the International Space Station, which it shares with the United States, Japan, Europe, and Canada. In 1998, Russia and the United States collaborated to launch the International Space Station. In April 2021, however, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov told Russia One that the ISS's condition made him feel like there is not much left to be desired. Air leaks and a malfunction of the space station's oxygen supply system have lately occurred, further extending Russia's doubts of placing their trust in the ISS. NASA has cleared to fly the ISS until 2028, but the chances are that they too will cut their ties with the station by the year 2035 after Russia goes ahead with their launch, provided things go as per plan. So, that's it for today. What do you think about Russia making their own space station? Let us know in the comments and please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.